just want to say thank you all so much uh, for coming out. And I just wanted to tell you, you know, what we're all about here. I saw some people come in and they're probably just like, oh, yeah, there's food. Um, so I'm a part of Revolutionary Blackout Network. There are five of us that are a part of that network. And one of the things that we do besides streaming on a platform is that we also try to help people within the community. So we really are, are big on mutual aid uh, and giving back and things like that. So we have actually established a chapter in each one of our cities. So I'm the Boston uh, chapter. We also have Nick, we have Rome, CJ, and um, I'm forgetting, JB. Uh, so JB's in Orlando, Nick is in Kansas City, Missouri, Rome's in Detroit, Michigan, and CJ's in uh, Los Angeles, California. So the idea is that we would start these chapters where we are and then inspire other people that does not have an RBN chapter to start their own chapter where they live. So some of the things that we're going to be doing is events like this where we'll have like a barbecue where people in the community can come out and meet and greet. But then also, especially for those of us here uh, in Boston, we're going into winter before you know it. So one of the things we have, we're gonna do next coming up is the food and clothing drive for the winter. So we'll start like gathering like donations for that this fall. And the plan is to have that, that task accomplished at least the week before Christmas, because once the holidays come in, people just go rogue. So um, that's the idea that we have. So I just wanted to explain to you guys like who we are, what we're doing, why we're here, um, and and shout out to you know First Church here uh, of, of JP because they let us use this room. Some of you may have been in this room before a couple of months ago for Workers Strike Back. This is where they launched their Boston chapter here. So that's how I found out about that this room was available. Uh, but yeah, so all we ask is that you get the word out to other people in your community. Another thing that at least this chapter is going to be focusing on is we're going to do sessions. So some of the people that you saw today, like they're a part of the chapter, they help, they volunteer, and we all have different skill sets. So some of us are going to teach things to people in the community virtually. Some may offer to do it in person if they're available to do so. But we're going to take our skills that we know how to do and we're going to teach other people how to do it for free so that you don't have to pay to take uh, a STEM education class. I know STEM is, is your thing. You don't have to pay to take that. You don't have to pay to find out what are alternatives to higher education, right? You don't have to pay to find out how to grow your own food. Like these are some of the things that we're going to teach people and it's, it's volunteer. So our motto is that we have to help each other. And regardless of what you believe politically, we just don't believe that any one person is coming to save you. So this is what we do. So I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Uh, follow us at Revolutionary Blackout Network. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, but if you follow us on Twitter, it's at Rev Black Network, and you'll see all of these events and things that we do. Uh, and shout out to Rome right now, because Rome is actually building a library in Detroit. Some of you, um, yeah, yeah, shout out to Rome. I know some of you already reached out and you've asked, like, you've collected books to donate to the library. I think some people reached out and they donated computers to Rome uh, for the library in Detroit. So this is really big. I think he's almost done. I, last I saw, like, they already painted the outside and everything, but we cannot do it without you guys. Uh, the reason why we were able to do things like building the library and stuff like this today is because a lot of people in the community really chipped in. And I can't mention everyone's names because there were a lot of people that donated and some donated anonymously. But it just goes to show you that people really do care and they really want to help. So I just want to say again, thank you guys uh, so much. I appreciate you coming out. <laughs> thank you. All right, so I'm here with uh, Charlie. Charlie is one of the volunteers for the RBN uh, Boston chapter. Uh, Charlie, why did you decide to come out and help? Because uh, it's the right thing to do. All the things that are going on in the world, especially just in this area, is a little microcosm of it. Uh, between housing and uh, food and everything, you see a chunk of it in Boston, as you'd see in any other city around the country right now. And, you know... It, 
everybody has been affected in some way. Uh, I'm not on the street, so that's why I'm here, you know? Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. All right, so I'm here with uh, Pastor John Wheeler and uh, Tia Wheeler. Uh, why did you decide to come out today? And then also, I know you want to talk about a new uh, housing coalition. We, we, we came out to support you because you supported us, and, and we appreciate the, the work that you did. Um, also, that we, we came out to, um, to show the, the people that it was as one, I'm sorry, <laughs> that we can, we, can, um, we can grow a group that, that's going to, to fight here in Boston. I'll let Tia talk about the new program. <laughs> I know you're not throwing me under the bus, but, and, but yeah, anyway, um, one of the things that, we were, that we're also working on is that, you know, because one of the things that we've realized with um, our work with UFAT is that basically, you know, how basically, you know, many of the developments, they're basically kept within their own island and basically unaware and, of what's going on in that, and basically that, you know, and kind of feeling like, you know, they're, they're kind of stuck within their own situations. So one of the things that we're going to try to do is to form a housing coalition amongst basically everyone who's within the remaining public housing, pro public housing Section 8 prop properties and basically to, you know, get, to get people together so basically that we can basically, you know, do a lot more in kind of fighting against kind of like, you know, the forced displacements, the gentrification and all of that in all of that other jazz sorry that wasn't professional oh no worries um yeah because that's true because one thing we did notice like we talked to people in salem that are being displaced we talked to people in boston that are being displaced and i'm now there's also people in somerville being displaced but all these people have all these different it's like they have different housing groups or different housing coalitions to go to and they're not all connected Whereas it could be more powerful if everybody, if there was one coalition they could go under and everybody was together. Yes, and, and that was something that kind of like we, that we were, that we were talking, one of the things that we, you know, we talked about that would make things a lot more powerful in, Sa in Salem is that if people from all of those um, places that are kind of under threat to basically being developed, redeveloped and the people basically you know kicked off into other cities that if they had if, the, if more people came in together then basically you know that if, I'm pretty sure you can imagine that would basically really show that you know you these kind of like these these politicians and these elites that you know you're not working for the people and that you know that you know they're going to and that we're going to put up a fight in and um to make sure that you know that that people are done right. One of the biggest things that we're focusing now on is the conditions campaign. Um, the, the apartments they're 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 in a, they're in a sham. They're in a wreck. Um, it, there's rodent holes all over the over the place in the in all the neighborhoods. And, um, and the tailor, we found out that they they have mold growing from the ceiling. Mushrooms. Yes, and. Um, well, our neighbor across from us, her apartment was completely black, had black mold. They covered it over and she passed away a couple of months ago because she couldn't breathe. So there, there's a lot going on in housing that a lot of people don't know about. You know, we, personally I went to the manager and asked her if she would help the family since she passed away from this black mold. And the manager said that's not our problem, her children work so they can, they can handle it. Um, they don't treat the people like they're people. Uh, they, 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 they treat you like a commodity. They disrespect you. Um, in our office, they keep the door locked and the, it's, they're not friendly at all to the people. And that's, they serve the people, the people pay the rent, but they don't, they don't want the people to feel comfortable in their own neighborhoods and their own homes. Mildred Haley taught us that, you know, we are family and if we take care of our neighborhood, our neighborhood will take care of us. But that's no longer the, th the case anymore. And as we grow and, and as we've been in UFAD, we see that it's not only in Bromley Heath, but it's in, the, it's in the McCormick, it's in, in Commonwealth, it's in Taylor, it's in all the neighborhoods where Boston Housing just te treats the people with disrespect. Yeah, and it's not just basically Boston and and Massachusetts. It's basically, even in like Texas and other Texas, Florida, California, all of those other things. So basically, one of the things that history has taught us is that when when kind of like 
when basically like kind of like the regular people start getting together and actually making demonstrations and actually showing their disapproval, then you know that's kind of when stuff is stuff starts being really forced to happen. Well said. Yeah, um, right where we we live. We we had to go to the globe because of the rat problem and the, um and and we had carbon monoxide problems. But the fire department said that we're lucky to be alive. Um, the the rat holes it, there's like 13 rat holes in, in in my front yard. The rats are about this big, you know, and, and they run back and forth all day long. And but they they feel feel that that's the way we should have to live. One of the tenants said, "What?" Ask me, what do we expect? I said, we expect to live better than that. You know, um, the, the, the people who run the city, they don't live this way. They, but, but they allow the tenants to, to be, you know, to, to live in, in substandard living. And it's something that, you know, as a coalition, we're going to fight. Well said. Thank you both so much for coming out. Thank you, Savvy. Thank you, no, thank you for having us. All right.